1963, sections 1, subsection 3 says, I would like to read, subject to Article 2 of this warrant, the numbers of persons appointed to the different ranks of the orders in any calendar year shall not exceed A. In the case of Grand Commander, which is what is in contest here, in the case of Grand Commander, two, as respect to the order of the Federal Republic, and ten, as respect the order of Niger. What it simply means is that for GCON, for every calendar year, it shall not exceed two in line with the National Honors Act. So if the Senate President has been given one, it therefore means we are going to ask in our resolution as well that the CJN shall relinquish his own for the Speaker, not necessarily Tadujin, but for any Speaker of the House of Representatives until we amend this Act. You cannot exceed two in line with this Act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So that one is asking the, <laughs> the CJN to reject our own so that they can give it to Speaker. So that's what they are. That's what they are busy with yesterday. Mm -hmm. As the entire place was like uh, going down the drain. That's tied to uh, GCON, National Deeds and that, because they are still going to have a ceremony for that. Maybe when Tifnubu is back. You see, the, uh, what do you call it? The Bubu sellers are returning. The likes of these two guys, eh? Wala, Ele Yinguru, as well as uh, Reno Mokri, they are back, and they are back as unofficial spokespersons for Tifnumbu to fill in the vacant positions that will help them to come and talk to you, Nigerians, to give Tifnumbu time and chance. Buwala was, uh, Buwala Elinyi Guru was right there on channels yesterday as an unofficial spokesperson for Kolu, discussing the Kolu cabinet, by the way. Here is part of that in, uh, con I mean, conversation. One or two things about his ministry might be impressive, mm. but unfortunately here, Lagos part one or Lagos part two, and uh, most people that have worked with him in the past. But let my producer bring back some of the faces of those whom some Nigerians have identified as the major, the prominent faces in the uh, Tinubu cabinet, and those whom they say maybe might be retained or not. Uh, but Mr. Buala, how powerful, though, would this would uh, a change of cabinet be for President Tinubu? Would it make any significant difference? And some of what Mr. Claude Johnson said about the politics that play out right. within the presidency. The, the good thing about uh, President Bola Tinubu is that he knows what he wants and he cannot be controlled. There are people you see, you say, okay, if they put one or two things together and bring it to him, he might be swayed by them. But if you, if you look at him and both historically and now, is that if, for example, he, he picks interest in you, no matter what he said against you, it will not move him. He's going to be driven by data that he has come you know, in contact with and then the decision he has formed on the basis of that. But you see, the choice of who the president works with or doesn't work with is that of the president. It is his prerogative. If you look at Section 5 of the Constitution, it is clear that the executive power lies in him, and he carries out those duties by himself, vice president, ministers, or organs of government. It might be a good, uh, a valid argument that people will say there shouldn't be concentration of people from one place or the other. If you look at the people they call, uh, from what I'm hearing and reading, they call the Lagos boys, they are not necessarily indigenous of Lagos. They come from their various places around the country, including uh, southeast and the north. But probably because they lived over this period of years in Lagos and have had worked with him in the past, probably have one link or the other, that is the assumption that he's placing the Lagos, boy over and, Lagos boys over and above others. The discretion is that of his. That is my thinking about it. But the most important thing is that there are key, and you know, bringing it back to the issue of uh, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amela, is that there are key positions in government that by their very nature, they are bodyguard-type positions that you can never be You're seen right. as a good man for the whole of the period, you say, because the nature of that place is to take the bullet for the president. You are going to be making decisions 
on his behalf that he will otherwise not do. So those who do not fancy that decision will not be in your good books. Sometimes you are probably the, the reservoir or the depository of some of president's decision. The people whose decision favor them will be happy with you, but those ones that decision disfavor them will not be comfortable. All I'm saying in a nutshell is that whichever you turn it, governor or president, the constitution has empowered him to choose the people he will choose from across the country that he thinks will help him in achieving his mandate. Measurement, I think, should be competence and compatibility. You asked about the uh, ministers. I don't think there is anybody in Nigeria that is in doubt that there is a fundamental problem in the administration of ministries by some ministers because we now know there is a KPI and citizens can actually access it. Citi they call it citizenship, uh, citizens tracking. You can actually go there and see the KPI of a ministry. And when you see that KPI, you also know what the minister has done. And on your own, you can gauge based on what has been said as the schedule for him and what he has done or not done and form the opinion that Lagos part one or Lagos part two and uh, most people that have... So like I said, uh, even Renu Mokri is back too. After eight years hiatus, when he's been uh, away, but we'll come back to him. He put this up uh, uh, yesterday that he's now in Nigeria. He took the picture with uh, Tifnumbu uh, two days ago and then uh, before Tifnumbu left Nigeria for the UK, okay? But the, the same Buhala guy had this to say before now, which I think was basically the truth that ever came out of his uh, guru mouth, by the way. Then we'll go back to what uh, is renewed, is only renewed weary. I'm not perturbed by that, but let me tell you what they are selling to the Nigerian people, what they call uh, renewed hopelessness. In their renewed hopelessness, what is their economic that is, model? You call it renewed hopelessness, but they call it... Does not even know half of what Buhari knows about government or national security. If you have the time, I will tell you more about what they are campaigning with as an agenda or as a rhetoric that he did well in Lagos. I will tell you between the 1999 to 2007, if you take out context, he actually performed worse than some governors in Nigeria because the Lagos that they say he did, he improved the revenue, he, did, he only collected tax. All the infrastructure needed for a state or in fact a country to develop was on ground. Lagos used to be the Nigerian national capital. Before Nigeria was formed, Lagos was a colony. You have all the infrastructure for economic development. As what you didn't establish them. There was seaport, there was airport, you have commercial activity, all the embassies are there. So transaction with foreign envoys is in Lagos. All the hotels are there, headquartered in Lagos. All the banks are headquartered in Lagos. All security apparatus, every facility and infrastructure for economic development was in Lagos. He didn't bring them. As what you did not get, uh, did not uh, invite or uh, introduce or brought to Lagos any serious foreign investor or domestic investor. And these revenues we are talking about that they claim he has generated, we are on. It's just that the government didn't have the infrastructure in collecting those. So what he did throughout this period was to collect tax. That's what they claim by revenue. And even then, the reason he did that was because the company that was collecting the tax, the company is allegedly traceable to him. So if you pick a man on the street and you tell him, I want you to collect us in a given area, your percentage is 30 percent, he will be optimal. He will be highly effective. This is the summary. But let me tell you what he did in Lagos. One, he attempted to destroy democracy. He wanted to introduce what we call monarchical democracy, a democracy that is not reflected by the will and wishes of the people, but reflected by the choice of a man and people should run around it. He introduced the concept in politics in Nigeria that we call uh, take the queue, follow the queue. During he was the only governor in Nigeria that during the period of seven years he has had to impeach his deputy governors three times and change them. He's the only politician in Nigeria that nobody wins under his tutelage unless the person is chained or I'm not perturbed by that, but let me that is that uh, Barawo Bowala, who is now the unofficial spokesperson for Tifnumbu. He is now one of those pushing the agenda that Tifnumbu is going to change his cabinet. He's going to sack some people because they are the ones that are not working. All right? They are the ones that are not making Tifnumbu's work show. 
the reasons why you are suffering, the reason why your economy is in the gutters. Uh -huh. uh -uh. Wait, from what you said there yesterday, here is another part of it. From me too, I just kind of take you back to last year, all right? Uh, where I believe he was pretty much honest. But now he's looking for a job. And that job is to come and add to the number of uh, the propagandists that will keep lying to you. As if to say lying to you will actually change anything. Here, he now has an opinion about Iflumbu's illegitimate regime. And he's uh, the unofficial spokesperson. Listen to this. One or two things about his ministry might be impressive. Mm. But unfortunately, he, have, he may have come but to the let, let me take you up quickly on okay. what the president said yesterday. Right. Uh, and there are those of the school of thought that on an Independence Day speech, right. your achievement or government uh, propaganda should never surface in an Independence Day speech. Uh, maybe the writers are not, as, uh, are not thinking in that line or not. Uh, that those who think that Independence Day, you're supposed to be talking about Nigeria's unity, the effort of the heroes that put the nations together, um, that, that helped form uh, with the independence, and those who thought that uh, Independence Day should be talking about Nigerians and not about what a government is doing. There are other days for that. And in fact, when the president has said, ways and means, he has there are a lot of people who said, that is not correct. You see... If you look at our Cordoba, you will see the creed, unity and faith, peace and progress. Any of these areas, you can outline them or talk about them in your independence. Speech. So unity and faith might be about unity, about Nigerians, about just like the America, they call the state of the union. But peace and progress also talks about the progress as a country we've made so far. And if you look at his speech, he actually touched on them. He talked about how we have come away from what would have destroyed Nigeria in the 60s, I think 1966 or so the civil war, and talk about the progress we've made, talking about how to avoid what will create a problem for Nigeria. He also talked about his own government, because the go he is to account. On Independence Day, you account to the Nigerian people how you manage the common, uh, you know, to, uh, the common wealth of the people. With respect to the ways and means, it is blown out of proportion, for God's sake. I know that this is politics. A lot of people will pick one or two things. The crux of the matter with securitization that they are talking about, you know, the ways and means, if you look at the speech, if you look at what the government has done, it is, it is a matter of, I won't say semantics, but probably perspective. If I collect loan from you, Sheun, and it has accumulated to a point where it becomes heavy, that if I have to pay it, it will ground me. I may not be able to do anything. If I reach agreement with you and then securitize it and then spread it over a period, 30, 40 years, where I now I'm going to be paying annually, but in such a manner that it will not even affect me at all it will be safe for me to assume that I've addressed that problem. Because now I don't have to have high blood pressure. I don't have to have sleepless night. But then the other person is saying, ah, you should have told us that you actually carry the money and give it back to the central bank. So it is a matter of perspective. The but president it, was the, right this, on point. The, the, the president was not right by saying he has cleared it. Is he right? He has addressed the problem. But he saying clear, he has cleared it is not true. No, but I, what I'm saying is, now, whether you call it cleared or address the problem, the whole idea of loan is burden. And so if you collect a loan that creates a burden that makes it impossible for you to move, your prayer and pursuit will be to deal with that situation so it does not impede on your progress. Now, this uh, uh, ways and means has been, a, a portion of it has been secretized, right? But there has been an agreement with the central bank in such a way that it has been restructured and spread over a period of years where the government now will be paying and paying until it offset finally. Mm -hmm. So it will not, in my view, probably people with numbers can come up with issues, but I am talking about perspective, I'm not talking about numbers. The perspective is that we have addressed the problem, now we don't have to have a problem, we can mm -hmm. govern, we can pay our debt, we can invest in infrastructure, because the issue of waste and means now is no longer a thing that will give us sleepless night. Mr. So Johnson, a restructured loan is not a paid loan. President is wrong. You've not paid. You've not paid. You've cleared means you have paid. I mean, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't pay by semantics. Of course, if we we'll still have years to pay back that particular loan, so you can me. You can't say you have paid when you've not paid it. If it said, oh, we have restructured so that we can do ABC, fine. If you, but saying that he has cleared, well, that's a lie. I mean, on a national television. I'm sorry. You know, number two. Um, 
you asked about the about appointment from certain places. You know, during during Buhari era, when we raised these, you know what they told us? Oh, he can work with anybody he likes. But funny enough, later the same people were now you know shouting that where do we have where do we have you know all the heads of particular agencies from same zone if we are repeating the same problem you must address this see the nation the president addressed the topic of unity in his in his broadcast in his speech and he said something that uh, we have learned to you know to 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 uh, 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 to use our diversity to you know for our unity no we haven't learned that you know that Nigeria right now is more, div more divisive like ever. So it would have been a time for the president to demonstrate, you know, leadership in bringing people together, in unifying the country by ensuring that you don't have so much noise of marginalization of some people. Now, we have laid the foundation for a country that when each man gets there, he wants only his own person. He wants like him. It's not just the president. If you, have, if, you, if you put a man in an office today, go check the list of appointments, the list of uh, uh, those he will employ there. They will probably come from, you know, more from his religion, more, more from his you know, own place and all that. That identity politics, we must address it in Nigeria. Right. There Let's, is no yeah. region that has the monopoly of competence. Let's take a break. I need to... <laughs> They said they should test the mic. The way it was like, like that. So, Buala that is looking for a job of a spin master is so stupid. He is so kind of like a, you know, a foolish too, right? And so incompetent in doing it that it is so embarrassing, right? The man that once said this about it, I'm going to replay this again, just kind of like to wrap up at this, uh, this mofo, trying to help her get a job, a job to help her whitewash Tifnumbu by using, trying to use as, what they call the semantics, that they use uh, uh, the, you know, using the, the, the word play to try to make everybody sound like uh, you are the one who don't understand him. He's a criminal that used to work for Atifku. Now he's so desperate to become one of those. Hmm? Collecting money and traveling around with Atifunumbu and lying to you. I'm not part of by that, but let me tell you what they are selling to the Nigerian people, what they call uh, renewed hopelessness. In their renewed hopelessness, what is the economic that model? You call it renewed hopelessness, but they call it... Does not even know half of what Buhari knows about government or national security. If you have the time, I will tell you more about what they are campaigning with as an agenda or as a rhetoric that he did with the Lagos. I will tell you, between the 1999 to 2007, if you take out context, he actually performed worse than some governors in Nigeria because the Lagos that they say he did, he improved the revenue, he, did, he only collected tax. All the infrastructure needed for a state or, in fact, a country to develop was on ground. Lagos used to be the Nigerian national capital. Before Nigeria was formed, Lagos was a colony. You have all the infrastructure for economic development. As what you didn't establish them. There was seaport. There was airport. You have commercial activity. All the embassies are there. So transaction with foreign envoys is in Lagos. All the hotels are there, headquartered in Lagos. All the banks are headquartered in Lagos. All security apparatus. Every facility and infrastructure for economic development was in Lagos. He didn't bring them. Asiwaju did not, get, uh, did not uh, invite or uh, introduce or brought to Lagos any serious foreign investor or domestic investor. And these revenues we are talking about that they claim he has generated... We are on. It's just that the government didn't have the infrastructure in collecting those. So what he did throughout this period was to collect tax. That's what they claim by revenue. And even then, the reason he did that was because the company that was collecting the tax, the company is allegedly traceable to him. So if you pick a man on the street and you tell him, I want you to collect us in a given area, your percentage is 30%, he will be optimal. He will be highly effective. This is the summary. But let me tell you what he did in Lagos. 
One, he attempted to destroy democracy. He wanted to introduce what we call monarchical democracy. A democracy that is not reflected by the will and wishes of the people, but reflected by the choice of a man and people should run around it. He introduced the concept in politics in Nigeria that we call uh, take the cue, follow the cue. During he was the only governor in Nigeria that during the period of seven years he has had to impeach his deputy governors three times. And and he is not alone. Remember Reno Mokri, eh? the guy that went all about to tell you how he traveled to Chicago State University to verify that indeed Omo Tifnubu be a heroin trafficker. Tifnubu did not go to school and he forged his certificate, blah, 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 blah. He was a guest on TV, Arise uh, TV in Nigeria at the point. Talking about Tifnumbu Abeti Bagbe. Look, I went to Chicago myself. Nobody told me I went to Chicago myself. I went to the court where Bola Tinubu had this issue. I went to the Chicago State University. I went there, I saw the documents myself. Bola Tinubu is a known drug lord. I went there. No, I mean, I, I, another person isn't telling me. You see the picture on the screen? I took that picture. If you move to the right, you're going to see me in that picture. Bola Tinubu is a known drug lord. He has this um, um, man uh, who is meant to be the Minister of Labor and Productivity, I'd rather say on productivity, who went on TV to try to hoodwink Nigerians, telling them that the charge against Bola Tinubu was just for uh, tax, that all he paid was tax, that he, wasn't, he had nothing to do with drugs. That is a big lie. I have the document here. Nigerians can see it. I hope you can see it on the screen here. I have the document here. It actually says, and if you look at it, it says dockets, dockets. A docket and as I'm speaking, your viewers can go on Google and fact check me. A docket is used for a criminal pending, a, a criminal pending. So you don't use a docket for a civil matter. And then right on the very first paragraph on this docket, it says that this is a forfeiture action under section, under 21 USC section 881. USC is the United States Criminal Code. I will say it again. USC is the United States Criminal Code. Now, if you're watching at home, you can go on Google and you can fact check me. The United States Criminal Code is Title 18, USC, United States Criminal Code. And I'm going to read what uh, Section 881 of the USC, the Criminal Code, says. Now, this is it. I'm reading it. Nigerians can see it here. This is what I'm reading. It says... The following shall be subject to forfeiture to the United States and no property rights shall exist in them. All monies, negotiable instruments, securities, or other things of value furnished or intended to be furnished by any person in exchange for a controlled substance or listed chemical in violation of this subchapter. All proceeds traceable to such an exchange and all monies, negotiable instruments, and securities used or intended to be used to facilitate any violation of this subchapter. The word used there is controlled substances. Now, for Nigerians who understand this, a controlled substance are what they call narcotics, hard drugs. In this case, it was white heroin. Bola Tinubu was involved in a white heroin cartel. We knew, and he was the treasurer of that cartel. And then he put some monies into an account. He was working for Mobile. And as he was working for Mobile, his salary was $2,400. Yet, he paid in a total of $1.4 million into several accounts. Now, he was asked to explain how he got those monies. He could not explain how he got those monies. So, one of those accounts, the monies in there, $460,000, it was, it was forfeited to the United States government. It was not taxed. Now, there is only one agency of the United States government that has been given the authority to take forfeited amount, and that is the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. If you look at the case of the U.S. state, this, uh, the, uh, the state versus Ishmael Zambauda, who was the leader of the the Sinaloa drug cartel. The exact same language that was used in this docket is the exact same language that was used for that man, Ishmael Zambalda. And if you're watching me, you can Google it. That it says that you agree to forfeit $5 million to the United States. 
Word for word with what was used for Bola Tinibu, the only difference is the amount. Bola Tinibu forfeited $460,000. Ishmael Zambalda forfeited $5 million. But the source of the money came from the same place, drugs. Yeah, but Barry, let me come in very quickly. So some people who are also the school of thought will say to you, forfeiture is in fact a civil proceeding, not a criminal proceeding. What do you say to that? Also an indictment is an allegation. And uh, not, not a conviction. There is that school of thought around it. Does it hold any weight for you? No, I have a master's in law from the United Kingdom. You know, the man who came to speak, uh, what's his name, uh, Festus Kayamo. And look, the Legal uh, Practitioners Privileges Council, they have to sanction Festus Kayamo because what he did was either very dishonest or very ignorant or both. And you've got foreign embassies who are watching this and they have equivalent titles to the senior advocate of Nigeria. If they watch on... New Zans, Lele. Also... The, the other time, oh, they were working for a thief crew. Uh -huh. 